Well, shalom, everybody. Ariel Bartit Sadok here from the Kosher Torah School. The online warehouse, of course, at koshertorah.com. I want to welcome you all to our Wednesday night classes. Our topic, of course, is my book, Protection from Evil. But we go beyond the book in this series. This is our third lesson in this series. And tonight, we have to speak about something, well, let's put it bluntly, something dangerous. Our previous classes, I've outlined matters of spiritual warfare. In our previous class, due to social issues at the time, I addressed the importance of physical security, physical self-defense. Tonight, before I even can talk about psychic self-defense, we really have to identify first what we are defending from. We have to identify and understand the nature of the danger that we face. You see, the big problem with the kind of danger that we talk about in the psychic world is that people don't get exactly what the problem is. Many people think that we're dealing here with something philosophical, psychological. The, the existence of evil, it's such a philosophical you know, a theoretical, uh, you know, idea. What, what exactly is evil? Well, let's just cut to the quick. We have to recognize that evil is not something just subjective within a context. It is something tangible and actual and real. And I need to explain why and how. Let's go right back to the Bible. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. Very important pasuk verse where in which it says Yotzer or Bore Hoshech will say Shalom U Bore Ra Aneo Shemo Seatako. God is the one who forms light and creates darkness, right? Makes he actually you know, say shalom, he makes peace and creates evil. God says he's the source of them all. You see, this is something that is significantly different in our Torah tradition than you will find from the Christian and even the Islamic tradition. In our sages, who are trying to impose the importance of living a righteous, moral, Torah-based life, they develop an entire genre, a system of education and learning where in which to deal with the everyday person, they pretty much told stories. Stories in our tradition are called Midrashim. And in these Midrashim, we have elevated biblical characters to mythic proportions. One of these is a servant, a messenger, a force of nature itself, whose job it is to maintain a certain type of equilibrium. And this character became personified in uh, prophetic and then later apocalyptic literature. Allah Midrash now, we came to call Satan, the prosecutor. And of course, we're very familiar with this personification in the Christian tradition. This became Satan. Satan has a big war with God. So you got God up there and Satan down there. And it's two forces duking it out for the ultimate, you know, control of your souls. And of course, you know, in quote, God's going to win. Because Jesus is on your side. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I don't mean to be insulting, but yes, I am being intentionally facetious. Because this concept of a duality, of a dichotomy, fundamentally contradicts the words of the prophet Isaiah. No. Understand this. There is no duality. Is there a war between good and evil? I pause before I answer that to make you think. Because ultimately the answer is yes. Pause again, because the answer is also no. It all depends on your perceptions. You see, good and evil exist. We talk about this in great detail in Kabbalistic literature. But we recognize that we're not dealing actually with warring factions. We're dealing with the singularity of energies, which is the ebb and flow and give and take 
of the universe itself. And when we talk about now protection from evil or psychic self-defense or the nature of this, in quote, evil, this enemy, this unclean, this dark side, the real dark side that, you know, Star Wars is trying to build upon. Oh, it's very real. But remember something interesting, that even in Star Wars, how many forces are there in Star Wars? There's only one. They call it the light side and the dark side. But it's one force. There's an ancient teaching from a, an old text which reveals to us that that which we call Metatron and that which we call Samakel, who is the devil, if you will, they're twin souls. They're Jacob and Esau. They're the light and the dark of the same. The two sides of the hand, if you will. That's us. You have to understand the nature of things. And I want to explain them to you right now, and I hope and I pray in a way that's going to become real to you to understand. In Kabbalistic tradition, you know, we say everything comes from the Ain Sof, and then everything emanates down through the worlds. But there are two forces in this world. One which is the expansive, outgoing form of life, which is called Ur Yashar, descending going out, moving forward into life. This is also called the Hasidim. This is what we call blessing, if you will. But then there's another force called Or Hoser, ascending light, where instead of going out, uh, down and out, it's contracting up and going back. Now, if you look at creation, creation was meant to develop out and expand the power of powers of life. This other force contradicts that, constricts that, and seeks to reverse the life-giving property. The life-giving property is expansiveness called blessing. The restriction and reverse of that is called curse. These are two powers that exist. There are opposing forces, but it's the movement in between the two that create our universe. When things are in proper balance and harmony, then the universe continues properly. Like it said in Genesis, right? Why he erev, why he bokir. There was evening and there was morning. There was darkness which came before the light. And it's only in the balance of two does Genesis say why he told. And it was good. It is good when everything is in balance. It is bad when it is not in balance. So understand the true nature of evil. There are two forms of it. One, when it's manipulated by the human individual, which we'll get talk about. And two, when it's actually in existence in the forces of the universe around us. When human beings, remember, we have three ultimate dimensions of reality space and time and consciousness instead of the Sefi Yitzira, you know, Olam Shana Nefesh stuff. Human experience, human activity, human emotions, human thought. These are all real things. These are energetic realities. And they float around the world. Remember you got brain waves coming out of your head? They can measure them today in any hospital. Well, when those brain waves exit your head, where do you think they go? <laughs> do you think they just disappear? They're out there. Every single brain wave that has ever existed from eons ago is still here, floating around, and you got gazillions and gazillions of them. Those who are sensitive to certain things can pick up on these brain waves and actually experience them. In some traditions, this is called reading the Akashic Records. But these forces of thought are the experiences of human beings throughout all of history. Some experiences are really cool and great. Some are really terrible and bad. There is something which we call the law of attraction. Similarities. Magnetic forces of attraction. Just like what we call in, in quantum physics the, the reality of perception, 
you know what you look at that's what you see well if your mindset is either positive or negative you will draw to yourself naturally by the universal forces what is positive or negative corresponding to what's going on inside you at the moment this is why we always emphasize in our Torah tradition surround yourself with holiness because the more that you surround yourself with holiness the more your mind it will sink into your mind to be holy and the commandments of the Torah that were given originally at Mount Sinai were given specifically for this purpose so that ultimately we can like Maimonides says weed our way off of idolatry the concept of deceptive dualities recognize the singularity and intuitively recognize the nature of natural balance that's what commandments are for the rituals that we surround ourselves for are meant to provide this for us but we got a problem now don't we because we disconnect Remember back in the Garden of Eden, what they call the tree of knowledge, good and evil? Real simple and short, let's explain what happened and why we're in this situation we are today. We've discussed this in previous classes about the nature of higher levels of consciousness, called in the Torah tradition, levels of soul. You have, remember we talked about this previous class? We said the, uh, the level of the soul that exists in the liver and in the heart and in the brain, then we spoke of that level of soul, which in the Kabbalah is called the Chaya, and we said that this is called a Makif, a surrounding energy around us, which we said is your aura. Well, we need to discuss a little bit more about that, and I, I've discussed this in my book, Protection from Evil. Again, I got it right here. And, you know, let me read, let me read to you. Right, right, right from the beginning here, what, what I wrote here on page 42. I speak about uh, developing the inner mental spiritual powers. And I say that you develop them similar to how you develop large muscles through physical exercise. Mental exercise developed through mental muscle, extra sensory exercises, energy exercises through extra sensory in quote muscle. Now, he said, I wrote here, today's superhuman is nothing new. Rather, it's something old, very old, very original. Tomorrow's superhuman will actually be yesterday's Adam before the fall. God's great plan for humanity is that we as a race eventually overcome the proverbial sin of eating the forbidden fruit and return to how we were originally created in the Garden of Eden. Torah tradition is very clear on this point, that the original physical form of Adam, and thus the indigenous state natural to humanity, was a body of light, not a flesh and blood. We never lost that original body of light, it never went away. But the result of the in quote sin was that our light body became encased in this body of flesh. Our consciousness became split between that part which stayed conscious of our light body and now a detached part which became entrapped in the body of flesh. And that is why today we have conscious and unconscious parts of the mind soul. And this is also why we have two bodies. Did you know you have another body? Physical body, what others today call the astral body. The astral body is our true indigenous form. In the language of Torah, we call this astral body the Halukha de Rabbanan. The Halukha de Rabbanan body is this astral aura, this Chaya level of soul of which we're talking about. Now this is important to understand because even though you or I are not necessarily in regular in touch with that level of our mind and soul, that level of mind and soul is still in touch with us and talks to us. But we don't understand the language. And this is why from that level, which we call psychic communication, telepathy, clairvoyance, all of that occurs in the Halukha de Rabbanan. This physical body that we exist in right now is called a klipa, a husk shell. And don't get confused with the metaphors as if the astral body is inside it or outside it, surrounding it. You know, these are all just, you know, prepositions to, to, 
give us a, a metaphorical understanding of relationship. But this universe that we exist in is a facade of our truth. And the true reality of the energetic level is what enables us to tap into the greater reality. And in that greater reality, how we bridge it from here to there, we go through this little level here. Psychology, they call it the subconscious. In the prophetic tradition, we call it the klipot. For those of who are my supporting students, uh, you know, our guys who support the schools, I'm there for them. I give them my essays on the klipot in our private classes and the like. For you guys who are in the public, you really want to get into the inner circle, well, you know what you got to do. But moving back to the point here. Protection from evil really means to understand that this psychic energetic level which surrounds us and is our reality, it's energy. Good energy, bad energy. Light energy, dark energy. Which is it? I should give you that dramatic pause to think for a moment. Because ultimately, energy is energy. And it's not good. And it's not bad. It is what it is. And its perception is what makes it what it is. So we can tap into that level through the powers that are available to us. Oh, I'm being too gentle. I gotta get specific. This energetic body in which we're talking about, this Halukhadarabanan body, okay, it exists in that realm which the Kabbalah calls the Olam Hayitzira. This physical world of ours is called the world of Asiya, the world of doing, the physical world of matter. You get to a point, I think personally, where in which molecular mass speeds up and it cycles to the point of light and then transforms to energy. They already know that there are hyperlight particles, tachyons, the real ones. I suspect that there's an entire particle universe, hyperlight, hyperspace, I don't know. But that's the other, this du part sufim. Is it this Yetzira? Or what is the nature of this dark universe around us, the dark matter, the dark energy? I, from what I understand, from what I've seen in my experiences of travel, there are other parallel dimensions in this physical plane. But whether we're going this way or that way, you know, which, you know, Asiatic or Yetziratic travel, we have to understand the nature of this energy. Like the force in Star Wars, it's all around us, it flows. What do we do with this energy? Think about electricity. Is electricity good or evil? Y'all darn well know that electricity is energy. It depends on how we choose to use it. I use electricity to warm my house. Cook my food, right? Others might use it to electrocute, to kill. Well, which is it, good or evil? It's, it's not, depending on how we use it. Bingo, now you understand energy. Light and darkness is how we use it. This energy around us, these are the laws in which we live. And as you attract, so you bring to yourself. Or how you project onto others. My buddy called me today. He's a professional counselor. He's actually in our class now. How are you doing? And I had a point. Concern. A dear friend of his living in the Holy Land. Um, a, a divorced woman. And he told me the story. That she was married and she's happy. But that her ex-husband placed a horrific curse upon her. They don't care. Words are words, right? Who cares? But bad things started to happen. I says, oh my gosh, this is real. It's another story from many, many years ago. I received an emergency phone call in the middle of the night. And it was from a distraught set of parents, husband and wife. They had twins in the hospital who were born premature. And these are secular rationalists. They didn't believe in anything. But they were panicked enough to say, their twins were getting better because they were in, you know, the incubator room and all that. But there was another set of twins next to them. And the mother was more worried. And this couple 
said that that mother looked at their kids and gave them the evil eye. And, you know, they shrug it off. Ah, who cares? But that night, they said, their children took a turn for the worse and almost endangered their lives. And they begged me for intervention. They, they never believed in the evil eye until they saw that. Well, let me tell you, the power of the soul, of the mind, of your emotions. Remember we said that Yitzhira world, that's this world around you? Go study your Kabbalah, take our courses, learn this stuff. The Yitzhiratic world is the world of emotions. Angels, the entities that exist in that realm, are emotional entities. If you're going to communicate with a Metatron, which includes Michael, or Gabriel, or Raphael, or Oriel, or Samakel. You speak their vibrational language, not with words coming out of your lips, but your emotional state. If you have hate, you draw hate into yourself and you project it out. If you have love, you draw to yourself love and you project it out. If you are a healer, you draw to yourself healing and you project it out. Every single name of a Yetzirahic angel, Raphael, Raphael from the word Rofe, healing. We use ritual where we call upon the names of these energetic powers. There's no magic there. We are opening our mind to the concept. And the concept there by the power of the law of attraction is drawn to us. And then we project it out for good or for evil. This is the foundation of Kabbalistic healing. In our meditation class in the Walking in the Fire series that we're doing now on Sunday nights, I talked about how we used to name yud ke vav ke to the different parts of the body. That's all well and good. But it's not a mental exercise. It is an emotional. You have to feel it. Remember those good old words from Star Wars? You have to feel the force flow through you. Many of them, I've never told my story about how I learned about feelings. Uh, I'm not going to get into it right now. Long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when I actually confronted one of the big Mikubalim in Jerusalem with the words of Master Yoda. And uh, I said, you know, you're teaching me all this stuff. I don't feel anything. And he looked me square in the eye and he asked me, who told you that? I what am I gonna tell you? I learned I, 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 I learned Torah from Master Yoda. <laughs> Wouldn't have done much of my reputation. But because I recognized and felt the right thing, that's when I was taken out of the public domain of the classes and put in the private domain of teaching with my master Rebbe Meir Levi Lavishov. I learned the right way because I asked the right questions. I felt my way through. This is what you need to understand about the nature of evil. Ze le'umat ze asa'alohim. This is an ancient teaching. There's one side and there's the next. Remember we talked about perception, light and darkness? In Kabbalah we talk about the ten sefirot. How many of you have ever heard of the ten sefirot of the dark side, of the unclean side? Right? They exist. And they're as equally powerful as the ten sefirot of the good. And it all depends on what one wishes to draw to oneself. Understand this. Remember we talked earlier about these powers called the Hasidim and the Gavurot, the Or Chazer, the Or Yashar and the Or Chazer, the expanding light which goes out to build and give life, and the contracting light which takes it away. Why does that contracting light to take it away even exist? The answer, to restore balance to nature. When you're in your Chaya level, that Halukha Darabanan consciousness, you're in touch with the greater universe. And you don't need to be told what the natural order is because you know it. Do any of you click on what I just said, you will know it. How many of you have ever heard of the New Covenant? No, not the one that the Christians claim that they have, but the real one in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah the prophet prophesied that a day will come when all people will know God from the greatest and to the lowest. 
no one will ever have to say anymore, know the Lord, which means, thank God, we rabbis are going to be out of a job. I'm not going to have to sit here and tell you, hey, this is the way it is. Because you're going to know it. You're going to feel it. You're going to experience it. In Halukah Rabbanan consciousness. That's the ultimate goal. The Messianic age. The new man. The new man, including male and female, remember that, is the old one. We're going to peel away the klipa body. Or we'll still be physical human beings. But we won't have this division that blocks our perception. We are right now in the process of this development. Understand the ebb and flow of nature. When you are in proper higher consciousness, you naturally know the order. You naturally know what's called good and evil. That level of consciousness we call the tree of life. And that's why we call Kabbalah study the tree of life, the Etz Hayim. Because it is not an academic acquisition for the Neshama brain in the head, but it is an experience of Kabbalah reception from the Halukah Rabbanon astral body, which we receive within. So if you and I are going to have a discussion, it doesn't matter what the topic is, and we want to know, Rabbi, what's the right thing to do? Or what's the right thing to believe? And, oh, I can't do a good Master Yoda quote, but I'll say, you will know when you're calm, when you're at peace. How many of us have had the experience where in which you know something is true, regardless of any rational or academic contradictions, to that which you know inside. You know what I'm talking about. Rabbanit Elisheva sitting here at my side. She knows what I'm talking about. Things that you can just say, you know it's true. Because somehow, somewhere, something deep inside you is telling you. I'm going to share with you this. One of the best movies that I've ever seen that actually shows accurate reincarnation and a psychic understanding of things was made back in the 1980s. It was called Made in Heaven. It's a story about how soulmates meet. It's available, I think, on YouTube movies and stuff. If you've never seen it, you go see it. I don't know about the, the directors or the screenwriters, but boy, I've never seen a movie so accurately portraying how things really are. Understand the nature of this. And getting back to what my friend said about that curse, the emotional Anger and hate of an individual draws from the collective consciousness, from the Akashic record, all the collection of hate and rage and violence and projects it out of the individual onto the source. And that causes an imbalance in the energy, which creates all kinds of physical manifestations, physical illness, psychiatric problems, financial despair, and go on down the list. Evil eye. This is real stuff. It's very interesting. But many, many years ago, I read from the book Chokhmat Adam, The Wisdom of Man, written by the great sage Rabbi Eliezer of Worms, Eliezer of Germiza, who is actually the author of the famous little book called Razi al Malach. In one of the chapters, and no, I'm not going to quote to you this, teaches you, <laughs> I couldn't believe he, he actually wrote the halacha, believe it or not, there is such a thing, of how a voodoo doll works, what we call today a voodoo doll. And he said, you create an image, physical image, a little doll of stuff, and you can project positive or negative thoughts onto that image. And from that image, it goes through the ethers, from the image onto the actual thing itself. Don't think that this is make-believe stuff. Many of you might not be aware of what's called today psychotronic warfare, where in which extrasensory perceptions and abilities have been researched, augmented, and implemented 
is weapons of war by governments around the world. And they know the power of this, and they have used it on a number of occasions. You'll do your homework out there. Years and years ago, there was a radical Russian by the name of Vladimir Zironovsky. I don't know how many of you remember him. All right, he, He's the one who wanted to, uh, to attack America to take back Alaska. <laughs> well, Mr. Zironovsky, I think, has passed by. Uh, I don't think he's dead, but I think you know he's not in the limelight anymore. This is many, many years ago. But I remember listening to him on 60 Minutes a long, long time ago. And he was telling, you know, I think whoever it was, Mike Wallace, whoever was interviewing him, uh, you're going to just come and take over Alaska, right? And he says, you're not afraid of American nuclear war? You know, American nukes? And he just said to him very clearly, we have a Lipton technology. Your nukes are obsolete. A Lipton technology. You guys better start doing your homework. Because what you think you know is so wrong. The powers of augmented psychic abilities have been with us for decades. When you hear that the United States government has paid millions of dollars for remote viewing programs which they operated for decades, and then they cut it off because, you know, it, there's nothing there. Really? They spent millions of dollars and it took decades for them to realize that there's nothing there? Really? <laughs> Okay, believe that. Go ahead. Continue believing that. I remind you the words of Mr. P.T. Barnum, which you probably never said, that a sucker is born every minute. And this whole generation today, we're all suckers, meaning we believe lies. We have been convinced, brainwashed. You have to be rational. You have to be grounded. All of this psychic stuff is a bunch of nonsense. Oh, really? Yes, scientific method. You have to have proof. You should, you would be surprised if you knew the proofs that exist. For the longest time, I've been looking for a professional astrologer to work with me here in the Bullshit Torah School. So I wanted to do some stuff. I never had the blessing. I never had the ability to find the right person whom I'm looking for. So I decided there's only one thing to do. I'm just going to take up that research myself. And I got books right here up the wazoo. And I'm going to learn the proper way to understand and interpret your charts, to understand the ebb and flow of energy. Because even though modern science wants to say there's no rational validity to astrology, oh yeah? You go take a look at some of the studies that they have done showing the correlation of certain birth planets and birth signs to certain types of professions and accomplishments, and there is definite proof of these correlations. You can't deny them. So you've got to understand that when we're talking about energy, we're talking about something that's very, very real. You and I have powers. You and I exist like icebergs. The little tip of it is above the water, but the whole movement is below the seas that we don't see. That is where we are influenced. When angelic forces influence us, like it says about the watchers in the book of Daniel chapter 4, when these watchers want to communicate with you for blessing or curse, they touch your mind, your emotions, your soul. Remember the great king Nebuchadnezzar. They punished him, according to the book of Daniel. How? They didn't kill him. They didn't strike him down with lightning. They didn't send an assassin against him. They infected his mind and drove him crazy. It says that he would howl at the moon. There is no real medical mental illness called lacrophobia, which is werewolf disease. But they turned him into a werewolf. Psychologically speaking, they affected his mind. And those people who have the emotional hate, who are jealous of individuals, or who want something from individuals, use that force of hate to brainwash, to manipulate, and to control. When these forces are unleashed by 
evil people. It creates the imbalance in the universe. And then the universe activates or reactivates to restore balance. This is when all kinds of calamities happen in our experience. Take a look at human history. Look at this last century. You had growing in Germany for a century or more of rationalism, an anti-spiritual movement. It grew tolerant of anti-Semitism. It grew tolerant of occultic involvement. And ultimately, all of these things combined, the occultic elements with the rational elements, and first started as a political party. Actually, it started as a philosophical party, the Thule. They became a political party called National Socialism. Eventually, they took over Germany and placed their chancellor, Adolf Hitler, in charge. We all know the rest. Evil was incarnate. And evil then sought physically to control the world. And if it wasn't for millions and millions of people to go and fight, Evil would have conquered. And if the Nazis had indeed won World War II, it would have created more negative energies in nature itself, which could have led to the destruction of all life on Earth. This is why we say that it's the Torah and the laws of Torah that keep us alive. With that, I don't mean you have to be strictly religious within a, you know, a, a, a traditional ethnic expression like you see some of these black hatters or anything of the kind. No, I'm not talking about that at all. But you must understand why we have the laws that we do. Why we have the morals and the values that we do. I discussed this again, the continuation of what I was reading in, in Protection from Evil. I say here on page 44, Torah, out, Torah law outlines for us prohibited activities like eating forbidden foods and sexual activities. These prohibitions protect the life force and enable one to strengthen oneself. Where we are in consciousness is calibrated with our behaviors. And when we conduct behaviors which are energetically out of balance, these things reverberate. And it creates equal and opposite forces. And it's only in those equal opposite forces that balance is restored. Well, if you're going one way and balance is pushing you in the other, well, you might not like that balancing force. You might call it evil or punishment or curse. That might just be nature itself trying to get you, if you will, to realign Let's not use the religious words like repent. Realign with nature. That's what it's all about. The ten sefirot, which is the proper form and balance. The ten opposite dark sefirot, which is the state of imbalance. Everything is connected in proper tension with one another. When we embrace one path, it overwhelms and takes us over. And that is why you will see when people are involved with evil, they not only end up hurting others, but it backfires and hurts themselves. And if you are a victim of these negative forces, you got to start doing things. And just let me tell you this. To think that you can just turn to God in simple prayer, Dear Lord, make the evil go away. Amen. Well, if that works for you, because we say in Hebrew, kolakabot, good for you. But it didn't work for six million other Jewish individuals and other millions during World War II. It didn't work for them at all. You need further strength. Real, actual ritual of energy realignment. One of the great Kabbalistic masters who understood this was Rabbi Yehuda Hatiyah. And Back in 1942, he lived in Jerusalem at the time. And, as you know, we were in the midst of World War II at the time. Rommel's Nazi army was marching across North Africa towards the Holy Land. 
The British authorities were in panic, having to stop him by whatever means necessary. Rabbi Fatih approached the British military authorities, and he said to them, I know you're not going to understand this. I don't need you to. Give me a plane. Give me a plane. Let me and my people do our work. British military thought he was nuts, but, you know, in the circumstance, they said, let, let the crazy Kabbalist do what he does. Rabbi Fatia went up there, and he performed ritual sacrifices, extension of blood, which is life force, which through powers that he knew how to augment that life force, projecting force and field, over a path that that plane was flying, and at the place created a wall of psychic force, which would have an influence like the watchers upon the minds of the individuals, causing them to mess up, causing them to collapse their plans. And the exact place where that psychic shield that the Kabbalists developed was implemented was a place called El Alamein. And that is where Rommel's armies were stopped and defeated. That is true history. You must understand that you have a need for psychic self-defense. You have to perform specific rituals that you need to do to defend yourself against these psychic forces which are invading you. They're influencing your emotions. They're influencing your thoughts. They're trying to manipulate the influence of your behavior so as to collapse. And as such, in that collapse, they steal your energy. The real commodity of value in the universe isn't gold or silver. It's energy, life force energy. The Chinese call it chi. We call it nefesh. Others call it prana. Orgon, kundalini. It's all the same energy. When it is used in a proper balance of alignment, that is the force called these hasadim. That is the power which we call blessings. That is the ten sefirot of the good. When we manipulate and, and, and thwart and, and, and mess up the flow of this energy, that's what we call again these ten sefirot of the dark side. This power called the klipot. This power called the, uh, the husks, the shells. Um, darkness. right? The givurot. For every action, you have an equal and opposite reaction. So, when negative energy is projected at you, just to say, in the name of the Lord, I protest. Where's your energy? It's like a flow, like a tidal wave coming at you, and you want to squirt it with a water gun? It's not equal. We have a halakhic teaching with regards to kosher laws that teach that when something becomes, you know, unclean or unkosher, it has to become kosher in the exact same opposite way. We call this in Hebrew, kebala'o kach polto. As something comes in, so it goes out. If for many years an individual has with passion and lust and power of enjoyment drawn into themselves all kinds of negative evil, all kinds of perversions through sex, drugs, rock and roll, and the rest, you just think, oh, I'm going to do hatati, weepi, peshati, I'm sorry, Hashem. And all of a sudden it goes away? Nothing goes away. Just like you brought it in with energy, it clings to you. And even though you put it out of your conscious mind, that energy is still there, clinging to you like filth. And the only way it comes out is in the exact opposite way that it came in. With the equal amount of passion, rejection. And that is why when you, you're about to shuva or a ger, you take things to the olds and you perform a ritual, breaking them, casting them in the fire. When you read in the Torah, the laws of idolatry, they say you're supposed to take the idol, break them, burn them, because this is how we cast out the energy. You must do these things. When it comes to performing the rituals of the Torah, don't think that there's hocus pocus involved. If you're going to recite psalms, right? the famous psalms of protection are Psalm 91, Psalm 3, and of course many people today are big 
you know, students, Hasidim, they love, of course, Rabbi Nachman of Roslin. And Rabbi Nachman, of course, taught his Tikkun Klali. Well, if you think, yeah, the Tikkun Klali, it's a nice thing. Yeah, I can read 10 Psalms. It's not going to work anything for you. But if you believe it, and you have passion for it, and you're activating those Yetzirahic energies from Tiferet, which is the heart, and you're generating the vibration of polarity of the Hesed and the Gavura with the Tiferet to manifest in the Netzach and the Holy Yesod, Yesod, this libido energy. And then you create the energetic field for your passion, which then creates the balance. Baal Shem Tov, he understood this. That's why he taught, it's not an academic Torah, but an emotional Torah. That was the real teaching. And you remember the famous teaching that when he had his dream on one Rosh Hashanah, he sent it to heaven and saw Mashiach. And he says, you know, you know, we're sitting around waiting for you for a while. When are you coming? He goes, oh, when people are able to do what you're doing right now. All ascent is in Yetzirah. But the Yetzirahic ascent, right? The Pardes is an emotional one through the Halukha, the Rabbanan Yitzira body. It is not academic. Most people make the big mistake of understanding ESP and psychic as being something intellectual in your head. It has nothing to do with there. Why do you think God says, God says, love me with all your heart. The words that I command you are on your heart. Heart is the ferret. The ferret is energy. Energy is your emotions, your guts. So yes, I could sit here very well and academically, and I could speak to you like I'm a college professor. Or I speak to you with my guts, and you understand what I'm saying to you, because I'm not now speaking to your head. I'm speaking to your heart. And that's what the kosher Torah school has always been. I've tried to do that all my years. To try to get this message to you. We are in a real psychic war today. Go and look at the Star Wars movies. We have a real emperor out there, a real Darth Vader. No, they don't wear black clothing. They don't have deep breathing. They don't talk like James Earl Jones. The Lord of Forces with you and all that other stuff. Forget the, 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 the myth. Get real. Look at what this world of ours is teaching you today. They manipulate your minds by creating imagery for you to say that which is good, that's really evil. And that which is evil, that's really good. You don't need me to give details. You know exactly what I'm talking about. This is why when anywhere you look at television programs, movies, anywhere, they put all of these in balance type of things and tell you that's normal and you better accept it. But it's not normal. It's not balanced. There's no energy alignment to it. And you can turn your eyes away from it and you can say, yes, it is. It's the new normal. And you will trick and fool yourself. But you will never trick and fool the universe. And the more you turn a blind eye to the universe, the more there will be equal and opposite reaction. And the universe itself will create whatever is necessary to restore balance, including confusing the minds of human beings to create world wars or natural accidents. How many of you knew that right after World War I, which killed millions of people, you had a plague, uh, a flu, an epidemic that went around in the 20s that killed like 20 million people? Yeah, this is nature in action. Remember like things like the, 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 the bubonic plague, the Black Death, and all this other kind of weird, you know, terrible stuff? Where do you think this comes from? Just arbitrarily? No. We have problems in our world because there's an imbalance of energy. And unless we learn to connect with that higher level of consciousness, to feel the proper flow of energy, and then materialize it in real life, you will always be a victim of psychic attack and evil. One of the strongest psalms that you could say is Psalm 109. I've heard other traditions, which also include Psalm 64 and Psalm 35, also good stuff. 
But just reciting words, blah, 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 doesn't cut it. You have to have the real energy. You have to do ritual, whether it be lighting candles, creating the sacred holy space, like I taught with the holy name Shaddai. That course is still available for those of you who want to take it. My biggest Shavitya protection here, this is the one from the book, Walking in the Fire. These are the swords of protection, the prayers. I offer this now in the 18 by 24 size for those of you who really want to be serious and create holy places for yourselves. This is real. This is not a business proposal. This is protection for your lives. It's your lives, you do with it what you want. But don't think that your life and my life and anyone else's life is separate from one another. We're all connected and whole. When it comes to understanding, you must know that there are things that we need to do. We need to create the psychic umbrella around ourselves. We need to reinforce it. We need to separate from those things that we need to separate from. And we need to embrace those things which we need to embrace. Physically, emotionally, and needless to say, mentally. If you want to invest in yourself and cultivate this inner, deeper awareness, this is vital for you. This is vital for us. This is our survival. But there is a real enemy out there that seeks to disconnect us from that. And by being disconnected from our source, then all of that energy can be siphoned off because we're unaware of it. We don't channel it. We don't connect with it. And like cattle, we can be led to the slaughter. Or like batteries put into the big machine to operate the matrix. That's the reality of where we are today. So, I have just a few minutes left here, but pretty much I've said what needs to be said. You need to be serious. Doesn't matter if you're Jewish or not Jewish. You need to be serious with regards to proper alignment. Some people will say that the results of that will make you judgmental or not properly politically correct. Too bad. You know, there was a time back a while to be politically correct, you had to hate people and want to kill them and actually contribute to their murder. Or otherwise, you would not have been considered a good citizen of Nazi Germany. And I'm sure the millions of people in Germany, all they wanted to do was be good citizens. That's what the right thing to do was. You see where this leads? This is what happens when you manipulate forces and flip good to evil and evil to good. It can happen again. Today, we are living in very, very polarized times. It is today, December 18th, 2019, that Mr. President Donald Trump is being wrongly impeached by the members of the House of Representatives. Go back in time. The last president to be impeached was President Bill Clinton, all because of some sexual improprieties in the White House. His day of impeachment was December 19th. Yeah, how coincidental. All energies are not coincidental. Everything patterns, they ebb and flow with one another. You must understand this. Stop looking at all of the entertainment of the world whether it be news or movies and the TVs, and think that this, all right, let me rephrase, don't allow these things to influence your thoughts and your minds. This is the big problem. Now, at the same time that we might disagree and disagree firmly with certain positions of certain peoples and their behaviors, we always treat everybody with respect. We are not violent people. We are not disrespectful people. We are honorable people. And we act honorably, even when others are not acting honorably to us. When people wish us harm, 
that that position of harm becomes physical, we respond physically, just like we discussed in our previous class. But when people project evil upon us, we have to fight back with psychic self-defense. And you're essentially going to take the whole evil that they come in upon you, shine in a mirror, and let it reflect back and destroy the individual who themselves is the source of the destructive energy. Remember I said Rabbi Eliezer Gamizi had the little the secret of the voodoo doll? Well, this is exactly what he was talking about. How psychic energies actually work. We perform this act of almost like an exorcism of negative forces through different prayers, through different rituals. One of the most strongest is called the pulsa de nora, the flames of fire. Oh, you'll hear a lot of rumors about what that is. It's called the curse of death and all the rest of this stuff. Well, I actually published the pulsa de nora in full on how to use it and what to do. It's in walking in the fire. No, I did not translate it because I don't want people playing around with fire. All right? Walk in the fire without getting burned. You don't need to play with other fire. But you must understand the nature of what we're up against. So look, like I said, we're running out of time. Protection from evil is not available anymore in paperback. I mean, I'm out. All right? Don't have money right now. They're actually working with um, getting, it, getting it redone, you know, like a, what, a, a pay-as-you-go kind of thing. Something like I think with the Amazon Create Space, uh, my de my designer and I are working. I'm going to get some stuff out, so hopefully we'll have books. But right now, it's only available in ebook format. Eighteen dollars. You want to read this book? You need to read this book. With regards to Shvitis, you need to have them. You need to recite the prayers. See, this is all you know, big prayer there, with the names of the angels and the stuff. You need to do this stuff, and this is real. And you must be willing to pay the price. That price is not something in dollars and cents. It's in energy. Because there are those that are out to harm you. In the world in general, and possibly to you specifically. You choose what you want to do with it. That's all I could say. Somebody's commenting here. Let me read his comment. Uh, somebody's saying, yeah, okay. Somebody is telling me that I'm not the only philosopher. All right. I, I, I hope that I'm not a philosopher at all. I don't, I don't really, you know, I study philosophy. But this isn't philosophy. This isn't the thoughts and ideas. These are real things that we have to do. You have to recognize, again, in conclusion, we're at war. And the inner demons, they're not really demons, they're inner forces of imbalance and negativity and harm. If you don't deal with them, they're not going to go away. In psychology, there's something called flight or fight. Most people like to run away into flights of fancy and fantasy. That is the cause of the mental splits, which cause all kinds of problems. Well, the inner evils inside us, you can't run away from. You have to confront them. You have to integrate them. And only by doing that will you be able to have inner peace. Fight this war. Win this battle. It is for your sake and all of ours. What more is there to say? Thank you again all for joining me. Our Bart Sado here, again from the Kosher Torah School, koshertorah.com. For the record, Hanukkah is coming up in a couple of days. For all of those of you who are out there, if you're interested in any of the courses that I have on our course page, you've got a couple dozen there to choose from. It's 20% off now for Hanukkah. Take advantage of these opportunities. Learn. Somebody is saying, yeah, this is not philosophy, it's practical Kabbalah. Yeah. I hope with emphasis on that word, practical. Look, this, is, this isn't, you know, it, well, what it, I'm not going to say what it isn't. What it is, is this is this is for all of us. If we, we want to talk about making the world better, bringing Mashiach, making Tikkun, this is it. This isn't believing just words. It's doing what needs to be done. Please take this seriously. Listen to that inner essence within you that's telling you this. You already know it. All right.
Ariel Bartido from the Kosher Torah School, wishing you success and victory. We'll see you all in our next class. Shalom.